Boat in Hiroshima, crazy innovating design, iconic in the car community. This vehicle had a 13B REW twin turbo rotary, flip up headlights, 50 50 weight distribution. Yup, I'm talking about the 92 to 97 RX7 third gen, the FD3S. What's up, guys? Dom here with the DR10. Today, we're going to be talking about one of my favorite cars, the Mazda RX7. Just to note, I've never owned one, I haven't driven one, so I'm not an expert on this vehicle. These are just fun facts that I thought I'd share with you and give you some insight on what I read online, just so it's easy and convenient for you. Here is a fun fact for you. Mazda had a 1.3 liter 13 V. It was the first mass-produced sequential turbocharged engine. 956 Porsche did it first, but Mazda mass-produced it, making it easier for the consumer to have thing was that this RX-7 had sequential turbocharged power and technology. It also pushed about 260 horsepower, 215 pounds of torque to about 230 pounds, depending on the trim. A fact for you that you may already know, but the 13B did not have pistons, valves, or connected rods. That's right, it ran on magic. The rotary. I'm just kidding. Here is a quick little inside video on how the RX-7 rotary motor works. Another silly fact for you, RX-7 stands for Rotary Experiment 7. In Japan, there is a company called Afini, which is the luxury version of Mazda. So if you see this logo, then that's what that stands for. I live in the US, so we only received a few models. We had a base model, a touring model, and we also had an R model. I understand in different countries, you had different versions like the Sprinter R, the Type RS, and the Type RZ, and the list goes on. That's the cool thing about the RX-7. Okay, let's talk pros. So pro number one is that it was well balanced. 50-50 weight distribution, like I said. That sequential turbo charge is pretty awesome. That had linear power, it was smooth. Tuning capabilities and the tuner community around this vehicle is also one thing that you just won't get in a lot of different vehicles. And I think personally, this RX-7 is still beautiful till this day. I love it. I don't know why. I just think the pop-up headlights in that rear end still gets me. Let's talk about the cons. Now, we already know that the rotary engine isn't reliable. I understand the apex seals go out. Let's just move on to the next one. Another thing that you may not know is that they're actually prone to rust. So depending on the state you live in, please double check that. Thing two is that the RX-7, although it is a very nice car, they're not as common, which means that the parts distortion to them are a little bit harder than it would be for other vehicles. Thing two is that you have to make sure you keep your eye on the maintenance. This thing burns oil like every thousand miles, and you gotta make sure to change the oil filters and oil every 3,000 miles, if not quicker. On a good note, if you caught me an RX-7, or even just driving one or recording myself next to one, I'm still gonna have a smile on my face. That vehicle is still a hero car to this day. And even if I play racing games, I'm typically choosing one of those. I have to say though, if I could see one a real one, like with the veil side body kit, it'd make me smile. Anyways, guys, that's it for the DR channel today. Please like, subscribe, comment. Have a great rest of your Sunday. And uh, check me out on Reddit, Instagram, TikTok, you name it. All right, guys, see you later.